I'm just gonna get things rolling because we got rock stars on the stage. And I'm not talking about that good looking guy. We are the Bancroft Brothers. I'm Tom Bancroft. And I'm Tony. Woo! This is Tony Bancroft. Tony, Tom, we got that. Anybody, Jeez. anybody listen to the Bancroft Brothers Animation Podcast? Raise, Raise your hand. hand. Woo! All right. All right, good, good, good. This is our crowd then. Um, when Tom and I uh, sat down, we started talking to Tina Price uh, like a year ago about panels that we wanted to bring to CTN, something that we haven't seen before. And um, doing something with TV animation and creators in, in the world of TV animation was something that rose, bubbled up to the top. We thought it would be unique and different, and you could hear from voices that you haven't heard from before, right? Disney's Pixar Moana, who cares? We're Woo! here to talk about TV animation. We came here. So All right. we put together one of the most awesome panels. We literally sat down, Tom and I, and said, who could we get? Dream team. Dream team of five panelists that have been a huge contributors to where animation is today that we knew that you guys would be fans of and you want to hear from. Every one of them said yes, and we're so happy that they're here. Yeah. And now, if you don't know who they are, we're going to give you a little video introduction and yell out their names, and you guys go crazy, okay? We have with us today, Lauren Faust. Lauren Faust! You can't tell me what to do! You're not my dad! No, but I'm Superman, and you'll do as I say. <laughs> yeah! And next we have Butch Harmon. Oh, parents, spare me odd parents. What is it? Wait, Lodi Brownie thing. Odd parents, spare me odd parents. Bring on me, pop up my mind. Up to scrubber, those green rose guava juice, giant snake, birthday cake, large rice, chocolate shake. Odd parents, spare me odd parents. Is that you live in your own kid with fairly odd parents? Yeah, right. I think he actually sang that song too, right? Yeah. That's you, yeah. yeah. Alex Hurts is here! These monsters are just tiny clay figures moved around one frame at a time by an antisocial shut in. Those people are called animators. Oh, we missed the gag. That was a good gag too. Gravity Falls. Who is and it? Can't wait! Craig McCall! Last but very not least, of course, Rebecca Sugar's here. Oh, soldiers, we'll always save the day. And if you think we can, we'll always find a way. That's why the people on this world believe in garments, amethyst, and pearl, and steaming. <laughs> wow. We are so thrilled to have them here, and we're thrilled to have you guys here. You obviously have a lot of love for these people, and especially for their creations, and I know that honors them. So we're going to get right into it because we don't have a ton of time, and we got a lot of talent right here to talk to. So we're going to start at the beginning of the game changing, and that really goes to Butch here and Craig. You guys both went to CalArts. You say we're old or something? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, 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 no. Is that what you're trying to say? No, I'll just all. let you speak to that <laughs> <laughs> by stating your age. Yeah, no, yeah. No, no, uh, yeah. But you guys uh, obviously uh, st kind of started this ball rolling, and it was really at that time back in the, what, mid-'80s, mm -hmm. uh, where things were really changing, and sort of the old guard, I guess you could say, of TV shows but also TV creators we're starting to kind of change. We saw that in feature films, too, at Disney and things. But it was a little bit later in TV, and you guys were just coming out of CalArts. So tell us, uh, and I'll say Craig first, uh, and then Butch, if you want to jump on. Well, you know, when I went to CalArts, the, the main focus was get a job at Disney animating in features, right? right. Mm -hmm. And there really, and for somebody who wanted to do cartoons and wanted to do comedy, there really wasn't any kind of career trajectory or path to sell your own show and make your own cartoon. It was sort of this fantasy 
that like, yeah, maybe one day I'll get to make a cartoon. Like maybe one day I'll win the lottery. But there really wasn't like a direct path like there is today. You know, there wasn't a cartoon network. Nickelodeon wasn't doing as much stuff with, with creators at the time. So it, it, it was a strange time for somebody who just wanted to make cartoons but had no outlet for it. Like the only guy who had really kind of broken through was John Kay. He'd done Ren and Stimpy, but he was like an industry professional. He had been working for years. He had done New Adventures of Mighty Mouse. So at that time, it was just, we just kind of tried to do what we wanted to do because we didn't know what would happen. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I'm going to just try to do my own thing, develop my films, hope that maybe I can get a job doing layouts on Ren and Stimpy or boards on Simpsons or something. So there wasn't, like I said, there wasn't a, a career path to do that, you know. But, but let's talk about it. You, you actually created the Powerpuff Girls at CalArts. I did, yes. I created at CalArts. They I were wanted, called? What's that? They, they were, were called the Whoop-Ass Girls. Whoop-Ass Girls. Yeah! Was sugar, spice, and everything nice in a can of Whoop-Ass. And uh, we, when we did the first pilot at, at, uh, at Hanna-Barbera, it actually stayed Whoop-Ass until some executive at Cartoon Network was in a meeting selling it to somebody, and they're like, wait, you're going to make a show called what? <laughs> and so then I, he called back and said, you've got you to change the name. That's amazing. But, you know, I had done it as a student film just because it's the way I wanted to tell stories. I saw things episodically. I didn't want to just tell one story. I wanted to tell multiple stories. I was into characters and comedy, and I just wanted to just make a student film. And the, the reason I did that real quick is when I went to CalArts, the first week you're there, you're sort of watching the reels of what they do, uh, what other students have done in the past. And all the films that stood out to me, Andrew Stanton's, Pete Doctor's, Jim Reardon's. Butch Hartman. Butch, yeah, really, Butch yeah, all, no, the, all no. the people who did their own thing. Yeah. I'm like, what jobs did those guys have? And they were like directing on Simpsons or they were at Pixar. They had the interesting jobs. So it made me go, you know what, I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm just going to do what I want to do in the hopes that it can lead me to a job I might like. That's good advice. I mean, that's, that's good for anybody to hear. I'm sure we all need to hear that. Yeah. Now, Butch, tell us a little bit about the kind of the historical landscape. I mean, there was this cat named Ted Turner that went in and bought Hanna Barbera. Yeah. Yep. And then Cartoon Network was born out of that, right? And what was, yep. how did that change things for animation? Well, and um, just jumping on what Craig said, um, coming out of CalArts in the 80s, every single thing, obviously you wanted to get a job at Disney, like you said, but um, TV animation was based on toys. It was just toys, like the Strawberry Shortcake. I worked, on the, Pony? I, I worked on the original My Little Pony, the good one. Uh, oh. Joke, joke. oh! It begins. No, yeah. It was... Wow. It was so bad, I have, to, I have to try and make up for it some. It was just the worst thing ever. I marked on that. I got fired from that job, by the way, because uh, there was a scene I was doing. Good. Yeah, yeah, I, I got fired. There was a scene where one, you know, the, some of the ponies have wings, and there was a scene where there was this one pony with wings hanging from a cliff going, Help! <laughs> <laughs> And I go to the producer, hey, why does the winged pony need help? And say, You're, you're like, dude, you shouldn't talk to the producer that way. Get out of here. And I got fired from <laughs> yeah. my little Seriously. pony. Wow. Don't ask so, questions. Yeah, don't ever ask questions. You're yeah. just an artist. So anyway, um, yeah, but like Craig said, getting, uh, then I, got, I got a job at Hanna-Barbera and uh, working on storyboards. Mm -hmm. And um, then we were sitting there just doing our thing. And I couldn't wait to get to Hanna-Barbera going, wow, this is great. All my childhood heroes are here. The guys who made Banana Splits and, and um, you know, Fantastic Four and Fred Flintstone and all this stuff. This is going to be great. And everybody there was like 107. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, didn't want to be there. They're very angry people, and it was just kind of a morose atmosphere. And then um, uh, Ted Turner came in and made Cartoon Network, so we all got to start working on our own cartoon ideas, which was really exciting. That's where guys like Craig came in, Genny Tartakovsky. Um, and, Wasn't and Fred Seibert? Fred Seibert yeah. ran. Seibert was part yeah. of all of that, Fred right? Fred Seibert. Look, a guy named Seth MacFarlane was there. I don't know if you know who he is. Uh, he came in there. Uh, he lived in my condo, by the way. He used to pay me rent. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Nice. Wow. So, exactly. So anyway, um, yeah, so it was once we got to the, the green light to come up with our own stuff, it was very exciting. But then we kind of didn't know what to do. It was kind of like, whoa, we have to make our own thing? Like, right. what's the format? What do people like? What, so it was kind of a learning experience all the way through because nobody knew what the audience wanted. We were told to make short cartoons, but nobody was watching those. Then they would make series out of those, and we'd all work on whoever had a series. We'd all go work on those. And uh, we kind of learned the process of... Right. TV show running and TV production through working on everybody's stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I learned every, every job in the book. I learned how to write and draw backgrounds and draw characters and do everything I could learn, which I think is a good piece of advice for all you guys. If you're out there and you can only do one thing, I encourage you to try and do something else because there'll come a time when that job isn't available and you might need to have to hop on to some other job. 
Uh, and don't be afraid uh, to do that. So it's really something you should definitely take this to heart. Let's turn into the good advice. Uh, That's great, right here. I love this yeah. panel. Yes. Now, yes. now, now Lauren, you, you came a few years after these grandpas, and out of Cal Arts. No offense. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> But out of Cal Arts, and but you went into feature films, yes. much like everybody was at the time. You did Quest yes. of Camelot. You did Iron Giant. <laughs> worked on Iron Giant. Worked Cats on dance, Cats yeah. Don't Dance. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't Good love and that? The ugly. Right. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. now, now, how did you then slide into TV? How how did that transition? Work? Uh, well, um, when I was finished with Iron Giant, that was kind of just when um, hand drawn animation was starting to die, and um, mm. uh, computer animation was starting to come up. So. Uh, kind of like Butch was saying here, like that was a job that was kind of going away. Um, and I was looking at my options and um, I wanted to continue drawing. Uh, and I'd always been interested in story. So um, I had, I was actually, a, I didn't even know him yet and I was a giant fan of Powerpuff Girls. And uh. I had a friend, uh, director Randy Myers, who was working on the show and I talked to him about it and he said, you know, they're looking for storyboarders. And I had never done it before, but I took the test um, and I got the job. So uh, it, was, it was just that the job I really wanted and that I really loved animating for feature films just wasn't, uh, was becoming less and less available. So I had to make a switch and I got to, you know, draw and write stories on a show about girls. That's like yeah. even better. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Now, for those that don't know, these two are married. Did you know that? Yeah. These two are married. Not they Craig just... and I. Those two. <laughs> yeah, those yeah. Two. That's <laughs> weird. Those two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know to be confused with Lauren. That's a much talking. cuter couple over yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just had a baby too. Six months old, right? Six months old. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. A new cartoon viewer, right? Yeah, that's right. The baby's somewhere around here. If you see the baby, let us know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. It got out. That's um, horrible. <laughs> so uh, I want to turn to uh, Rebe you guys, Rebecca and Alex. We're going to look at you like you're the young folks on the panel here. Okay. Oh, good. Um, now, it seems that, and we've heard a little bit from these guys, but I know in your bios, you guys started on different shows. You didn't come out of Cal, Cal Arts. I want to say you're from New York. SVA. SVA is in the house. Um, not everybody's from Cal Arts. Believe me, it's okay to go other schools. Um, <laughs> but you guys come out through school, and it was you were part of a kind of the next generation, of, we'll say, influenced by guys like these guys over here that that created shows almost like right out of school, had success. They didn't know that was going to happen. You guys started on different shows. How did that come about? Was that kind of the entry way into animation for a lot of people? Or did you start a show like right out of Cal Arts, right out of school? Yeah, well, so uh, both of us started working at Cartoon Network on cartoon shows. So uh, I worked on a show called Flapjack, if you guys <laughs> have that. It's a cute little sailor boy and this gross blue t t sailor monster. Um, and uh, That's the pitch, right? There. That's the pitch. Yeah. Um, and uh, you worked on, yeah, was it Adventure, Adventure Time, your first? Time. Yeah, with yeah. Penn, your former storyboard My partner. My former storyboard partner on, on, so it's this big incestuous pile. Even though <laughs> she's not from CalArts, she's just marinated in the CalArts scoop. But I got pulled in. <laughs> you got sucked into the vortex. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's so amazing to be at this panel right now because it's like, oh, let's interview the giants, and now let's interview the ants standing on their shoulders. Like, the reason oh. I knew at school that making a show was something you could do was yeah. because when I was in high school, I was watching shows like Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Lab, Fairly Odd Parents, Vader Zim, what, name it, and all of these were people who, you know, not that long ago had also been students who then pitched something and who made it. So the, they had cut, you know, with a machete the past yeah. through the jungle and it was there. And the weird thing to me when I was at college was that nobody, none of, most of the people that I was friends with, they didn't care I was like, guys, there's a path through this dark jun jungle to running your own show. And they're like, yeah, but I want to design a prop for Pixar. <laughs> <laughs> right. And like, they, awesome. didn't, they, they didn't think of it as something cool or interesting. Because it was easier? Is I that mean, why? And still, there's a bit of that. Pers I, I think people think that features are prestigious and the TV is. You know, I mean, just look at, I'm sure Marwana's got the main room. It's like, you guys could be there listening to some guy say like, oh, uh, yeah, here's an anecdote about The Rock. I met him. He's nice. Who cares? <laughs> like, <laughs> right? people Shaped animation history. Yeah. Amen. Um, Amen. You mean it yourself. <laughs> yeah. This is real. Yeah, but did you guys start on? Well, you already said it. You started on different shows, and and I'm turning to you, Rebecca. So you started on uh, Adventure Time. I was on Adventure Time. Yeah. I. I How did that turn into pitching your own show, kind of with Steven, Steven Universe? Um, they. 
Cartoon Network approached me asking if I had any ideas. And I, I had always dreamed of having a show, but I'm from Maryland. I went to college in New York City, and I never really thought that that would actually be possible. I actually feel like it's sort of similar where I didn't see a, a clear path, but I was coming from... Uh, my dream had been to do something in animation and then go home and do independent comics. I come from independent comics. Um, so, so I just figured, like, I'll... I'll I wanted to learn animation, I wanted to do animation, but that seemed like a distant dream. So I was like, I'll do that, but when it comes to actually telling my own stories, I'm going to go home and I'm going to do independent comics because that's where I can do things that uh, are experimental and are, you know, I would be able to really, truly express myself. I did not think that would be something I'd be able to do in commercial animation. Really? I thought, I'll learn commercial animation and I'll get a job and then... I'll go home and I'll do my own stuff. And it wasn't until I was working with Penn, who was really like, as I was Penn boarding, Ward Penn, Penn Ward, creator of, of, of Adventure, Adventure Time, Time, they were really encouraging, where they were like, this, just make poetry, right? Like, be honest with what you're writing. And I was like, really? <laughs> like, that's, I can do that? And I was like, yeah, I, I want to do that. So I, Cartoon I, Network said that? Penn said that. Oh, okay. Penn said that, <laughs> not Cartoon <laughs> Network. Cartoon Network being like, make poetry. I'm like, they're way more awesome than I realized. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Penn and Pat, I mean, that yeah, was, the, it's yeah. like, if I did something that was like something that they had seen before, it didn't get the kind of response that I would get when I did something that was really what I wanted to do, that was really personal and honest. That was always so well received and really encouraged by Penn and Pat and my storyboarder, Adam Mudho. Um, and I just learned, like, oh, I can, I can really express myself through cartoon. I mean, that was a fan, that seemed beyond a fantasy to yeah. me. When, uh, wait, Rebecca, are, are you saying that you pitched something before Steven Universe and it didn't fly? No, no. I, I, okay. was, I was doing boards for okay. Adventure Time, but I, I really felt like I was doing what I wanted to do within that show, and, and they had made a space where we were all kind of doing our own version of what that show was. Um, I was writing music for that show, and, and they were just the songs I wanted to write, and I was doing boards and drawings for that show that were just the drawings I wanted to do, and there was so much freedom... Um, I think that Thurup really taught that to Penn too, right? Did you yeah. have a lot of you had a lot of freedom on Flapjack? Yeah, well, like the Flapjack model was, you know, it's it's the eleven the sort of eleven minute board driven TV show model. What's really unique about it, and my show didn't follow that model at all, something completely different. But <laughs> that what's unique about that model is that basically, you know, you've got writers writing an outline, maybe it's a page or something, but all the actual dialogue is conceived and written and created and boarded, and they're choosing the poses. The board artists themselves, each one is a mini creator, director, writer, all rolled into one. So if you've got a team of, you know, whatever it is, three, five, eight board artists on a board-driven show, every one of them is a writer. Every one of them is a director. Every one of them is a creator. It incubates talent in a way that I don't think exists anywhere else, and I was lucky enough to have that incubated when I was on Flapjack, working with uh, Pat McHale, uh, created Over the Garden Wall, Penn created Adven Adventure Time, uh, JG who created Regular Show, all these dudes on a show saying, this is your episode, write the jokes you want. Okay, this is your episode, write the jokes you want. And on Flapjack, it resulted in a wildly inconsistent show. <laughs> 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 episode to episode, yeah, I was say. you're on the moon this time, and this time the character acts like this, and this time the character acts like that, but it was this magical grab bag of interesting, fascinating stuff. It was this wonderful circus. Um, even, and even between you and Penn, it would be like, oh, oh that's so Penn, whoa, yeah, that's yeah. so Alex. <laughs> and his stuff was so much funnier than mine, and I learned oh. so much in that job. Um, but so, like, from that, Penn learned that process from, from Thurup, which is, like, you know, empower all these artists to create their crazy vision. And then he brought that to Adventure Time with Pat, empowering people like Rebecca to do yeah. your crazy vision. And it felt like independent comics, more than yeah. any of the animation studying that I had done. It felt wow. like yeah. Yeah. what I had learned from doing my own comics was suddenly what I was doing. That is the one thing we all share in common, is we all were storyboard artists on some other show before yeah, that's we got our own. Yes. Yeah. I think there is a common denominator, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, oh, yeah, you don't just come out of Cal Arts, Tony, and, and have a show on Cartoon Network. <laughs> well, Craig and, I, Craig and oh. I did the same thing on Dexter's Lab, um, for the, exactly the same thing. We'd have to write our own shows and board right. our own shows and all that stuff, and it really does... T it learns you, uh, first of all, you learn how to be on a deadline, which is huge in TV production. You know, you're at home, you're doing your own thing whenever you want. When you get into TV production, it's like, well, I got to have this done by Friday. And oh my gosh, I have to work till four in the morning every night to do this. And it's due. Then I have another one the following week. So it really teaches you how to be uh, responsible and hold your, hold your deadlines. Things yeah, like that. And, that, and that actually helped me get Powerpuff because, you know, we did, Gendy and I did the two Powerpuff shorts and the two, uh, two um, Dexter shorts at the same time. The same three guy, me, Gendy, and Paul Rudish did those four shorts. Uh, Dexter's got picked up first, 
And then I was like one of the main board guys on Dexter's and Cartoon Network over the years kept seeing my boards come in and they're like, these are really funny, these are really great. We think we can give Craig a show. And yeah. they wanted to keep our crew together. So once we had finished the first four seasons of Dexter's, they were like, Craig, we love your boards on Dexter's. We want to give you Powerpuff. You know, and I know you did that short years ago, but with people have been writing in about it and your team is so great, we don't want to break you up. So you and Gendy switch seats and you're running the show. And so let's it, put a spotlight on that real quick because you said they they had they had aired Powerpuff, right? On yeah. Cartoon Network. So it had already gotten some exposure. Some yeah, it was it was one of the first shorts in the What a Cartoon program. It, we did a Powerpuff short and then a Dexter short and a Powerpuff short and a Dexter short. And when they went to focus test. Uh, they focus tested Powerpuff Girls with 11 year old boys and there was one focus group where they said this is the worst cartoon ever made and whoever made it should be fired. <laughs> and I got to go to the focus test and sit there and watch these kids. That's always and, fun. And speaking to what Alex was saying, what happened afterwards, I panicked and went, what am I doing? I'm too weird, I'm too artsy, I can't, this isn't work. I redesigned the girls, I gave them fingers and made them more kind of generic kids. Oh. And, I and I got a call. I want to see from, those drawings. I got a call from Mike Lazo who was my boss at Cartoon Network, and he said, Craig, I know that scared you, I know that, that focus test was bad, but he said, the thing that interested me is you got an extreme reaction. He goes, I, a positive reaction's great, the thing I'm really afraid of is a lukewarm, yeah, that was okay, right. I don't want that reaction. I, you did something, there was something about what you made that riled those kids up, you they wanted to know people. something. Yeah. <laughs> and, he said, and he said, don't change who you are, don't change what you wanna do, Just work at communicating you know, your idea clear and not saying. It's amazing though, I, what I'm hearing is like, it sounds like some kind of utopian society that I've never you know, experienced that, before. I, I would like to, I, I was going to Go say something it. about that. Go for it. So I, I, I had it a little different. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I, people liked my storyboards at Cartoon Network and, and I did get asked to pitch stuff and I kept pitching girl stuff like a stupid person and I kept got, getting told no. Right. Um, so I had to kind of... And what did they say when they said, I mean, was it just no or did they give you... It was like, can of... you make it more for boys? Wow. And, and then I would say no, so maybe I was the bad one. But like, oh. I, I got that a lot. I, mm. I pitched around for years and years and years. I actually left animation for a short time and tried to really? make toys because I thought, uh, everybody's telling me girls don't like animation, no one's going to tell me girls don't like dolls. Um, yeah. uh, and then uh, ultimately what I had to do was just I had to keep pushing and pushing and pitching and pitching and creating and creating and I didn't get my break until I f went and worked for a toy company not a, not a studio which was scary which was very scary working yeah. for toy companies is like a whole different thing and I got in at a good time and I didn't get to finally make my show about girls until there was absolutely no question that they didn't even want boys because right. um, it was My Little Pony, and people were like, there's no way any boy would ever, 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 right. ever, <laughs> ever watch this. <laughs> um, Brody's in the house. Yeah, Brody! Yeah, yeah. Yay! Yeah, um, so, so, yeah, so even though I was kind of in that utopian society, like, you know, I was, I was a long time before Rebecca, and they, they just weren't open-minded. That's what I heard all the time. She kept pitching, and she kept going, and she kept trying, and she kept trying. This is a business where you cannot give up. Not that it wasn't depressing. <laughs> no, no, you definitely yeah. get depressed. But you can't give up, because you might, it's all about timing. Like you might come in with the next Ninja Turtles, but they, they already have five karate shows on TV, and then, you know, your show might have to wait. But come up with something else. Well, for instance, on that subject, I pitched Whoop-Ass Girls to Linda Siminski when I was still working at it at Cal Arts. And she was a development executive at Nickelodeon. And she said, well, the problem you have with this is you figured it all out already. We at Nickelodeon want to help you figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until like five or six years later that she was at Cartoon Network that she greenlit the show. So I had it ready to go, but I just kind of had to keep working at it until somebody finally went, all right, here's your shot. Step up to the but, but as a student, too. that must have been yeah. hard to hear. Like, what yeah. do you mean I have it all figured out? What am I supposed to do? Well, exactly. Break it? <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. They'll give, you, they'll give you notes like that. Yeah, sometimes yeah. It's, it's a little hard. You have to learn the, the lingo and how to navigate that landscape. It's like, oh, yeah. they really like it, but they have to be part of it so they can get a paycheck as well. Yeah. You know, it's that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, well, it yeah. benefits a, a, an executive to have their fingerprints a little bit on your project. Because mm -hmm. that way, if it fails, they say, well, there weren't enough of my fingerprints. And if it succeeds, they're like, it's because of my magic okay, fingerprints. Exactly, <laughs> exactly right. There's a certain amount of instruction where they can always use it to climb in their career. 
and you mm -hmm. just have to kind of like make them feel included and say, that was a great idea. Have a lollipop and then just do whatever the hell you want. However, oh. there is there are times though, <laughs> listen guys, a lollipop. That's you know, cool. working with a network is a whole different thing too. Yeah. It's like, you know, you have to learn how to work with networks because, you know, they do have some ideas that are actually pretty good. I mean, I don't Plus know. Plus money. They have money. They have money. That's <laughs> right. But the thing is, too, you have to learn. When the network gives you a shot on a, on a network, they're going to pay you lots of money to put your show on TV. You need to learn how to work with these people. Don't be the artist that will, cannot, that will not communicate with anybody. Don't or be you the... find people who are cool to work with. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that, that, yeah. Was a, that was something. That was a, a, a promise I made to myself. It's like when I go in for job interviews, I interview them back. I'm like, do, I, do they like what I do, or are they going to try to change me into a different person? And, mm. uh, you know, That's I only, good advice, too. I only yeah, work with people about, that I feel confident about working with. You you guys all have had success too, and I know you guys are very humble about this, so you probably admit this too. A lot of your success on your shows is because you build a team. You surround yourself with yep. people that one, you can rely on, two, that see, have your vision and support where yeah. you're going. Is that true across the board? Do you feel like there's success in kind of supporting yourself, covering, you know, get your peeps around your you? Your team right? makes your show. The crew, they the really crew do. Makes the, show. the crew makes the show. Like, your name is on the theme song, and it's unfair because sh the theme song should pause for five minutes and it and should show every crew. single yeah. person <laughs> before they start it. Um, yeah. yeah uh, you have to find the most passionate, most awesome, hardworking, mm -hmm. cool people and try to create an environment where everybody is being pushed to do their best work and everyone is being praised for doing great work because they make the show. Um, and uh, like show running, it's it's really hard because you go to art school, you learn how to be an artist, right. and then you go, then you get a show greenlit, and now you have to be a boss, a boss, a yeah. creative executive, and, and a yeah. boss is not the same as being a friend, and it's not the same no. as being a collaborator, and it 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 can include aspects of those, but you have to be a politician, you have to mm -hmm. uh, think about deadlines, and you really have to look constantly a week, two weeks, a month, two months, down the line, all the time, and, see, and head off problems at the pass. And sometimes those can be a production problem, like we don't have enough artists to complete this on schedule, we need to either simplify what we're doing or we need more artists, mm -hmm. um, or a personal thing. I know two people on the crew absolutely hate each other, maybe don't put their cubes next to each other or talk to them and try to resolve and mediate. Like You yeah. have to constantly be looking for little fires that are gonna come up. Um, and it's there's really no way to there's really no way to prepare for that. You have to be a, like just emotionally a, a pillar. Yeah, yeah. Because there is always something going wrong. There can always. Never, nothing can ever always go right. Right. Um, Even with a group of friends. It's that, that situation where, especially with a group of friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a boss too, yeah. as a boss too, you walk in the room and everyone's talking, and then they all stop because you're in there, and it's like, yeah. hi, I'm just one of you. No, you're the you could you know you're the boss, and they all walk right. away and they talk in another room, and you're like, okay, well, uh, oh. I know, right? Oh. Right? It's, it's a lonely right? life. It's true, and right? even if like if you try to like be the most fun boss possible, you're like, I can't be the boss from the office. You know what I mean? <laughs> Michael Scott, like. There, there are some things you could do, like I would, we did a, a Easter egg hunt every year that like, I was like, hey everyone want to do an Easter egg hunt? And everybody looked at me like I was the lame boss, like this guy, and I was like, all right, I can, I can, I'll win them over. I was like, hey guys, I put a hundred dollar bill in one Easter egg, <laughs> and it turned into the Hunger Games. It was just like, people were turning <laughs> over good. couches and just like climbing pillar pylons. It was like the most fun we'd ever had in the office. It was like, I got you. I tricked you into having fun with me. Yeah, that's, I you bribed your off. love. Yeah, you actually paid um, him off to have fun. <laughs> but Wait, I'm writing like, this down. Easter egg hunt with money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it works. It yeah. works. Then, then you look like the rich fat cat, too. Throwing oh, they liked around. it. You can never win. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what, so, yeah, go ahead, uh, I was just going to say, Rebecca, just to follow up, because I think it's interesting. You, you're somebody that professes to have been somebody that wanted to just do the day job and go home and sneak off and be by yourself and, and make comic books, right? That's so, what we all want to do. But. Yeah, <laughs> and actually, I can see that. It's yeah. true. I mean, and I know that from all of us, probably everybody in the room here is that, te uh, you know, template. But how hard has it been have, to then become, I mean, was it like this greatest day and worst day ever when they said, yeah, we're going to green light your show? Well, oh, I mean, it, it was incredible. I was, I was stunned. But, but I think my goal changed, like my goal for making my own work changed from to having a show because my goal became to do what Penn Ward had done for me and mm. create a, a home in which my mm -hmm. team could express themselves mm. um, and then keep that, keep that up and, and really listen to what everyone wanted to do with a platform like this, um, and 
have it really come together as a, as a group. So I wanted to make sure, like, like I, I set forth really quick once I found out this was happening to redesign the, the characters to make them a lot simpler so that when they went into the hands of my team, they could look wildly different when everyone drew them. They didn't have to draw like me, they should draw like them on top of these. I was looking a lot at like, uh, early Nintendo 64 and like George Pal puppet tunes. <laughs> yeah. Like these just very basic like sort of shapes of that, but, but three, they, I wanted them to have dimension, but then I wanted everyone to be able to push and pull these characters where it's like, well, as long as Pearl has that nose, you'll always know it's her. Yeah. You know, like as yeah. long as they have... She didn't even have a nose in the pilot, She didn't right? have a nose, yeah. That it was just, and now she is... Everyone needed like, like markers yeah. so that whenever you pushed or pulled them, they would still look like them. Uh, and I yeah. wanted to, to, you know, have them have room to be like as cartoony as like Ian Jones Cordy would want to draw them, but also like glamorous and lovely and like and like within like the same episode they should be able to have that range. So, um, so yeah, I, if I were doing something completely by myself, it wouldn't probably wouldn't look anything like. Yeah. Um, well, now it would because I've been drawing this for a while, but. <laughs> But can I also I draw it different than other people. Oh, yeah. I was, I was going to ask if I can ask Rebecca a question. You yeah. may. <laughs> <laughs> as um, personal as possible. So, yeah. like, uh, Re Re Rebecca's show is a board-driven show, and she's talking about she wanted to do for her artists what Penn did for her, create a space for everyone to express themselves. Um, my show, exact opposite. Um, when I was on Flapjack, I was like, this is fun, this is awesome. I have a vision for my show, though, when I create a show, and I want it to, I want it to feel consistent, and I want there to be an arc, and I want everything to connect, and I feel like if I tell a bunch of people to express themselves, it's going to result in a bunch of stories that don't actually connect. So I'm going to do a writer-driven process. I'm going to have a small writer's room. I'm going to have a hand in writing every single episode to try to make things connect, because I believed that was the only way to make continuity work. That was the only way to make characters consistent. I felt, oh, in a, an 11-minute board-driven show, you're going to get really inventive stuff on a week-to-week -week basis, but when you step back, it's not going to all hook up. And then Rebecca comes along, completely proves me wrong, makes a show that has amazing continuity where people mm. are both expressing themselves and also building to a larger whole. My question is, how would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> that's a question. Because <laughs> um, um, just structurally in a boardroom show, that's insanely difficult. Well, this broken is the, the rules. You must be a game changer. Go ahead. <laughs> no, um, bringing I, it back to the thing. <laughs> yeah. I, think the, I think the thing is, it's been incredibly difficult and it's been incredibly difficult for my team um we all have we collaborate on everything um everyone needs to talk to everyone and for those of us who who are extremely shy and i can include myself that's like really hard to do yeah. um but you know first first pitches when sometimes things aren't even fully drawn like we're like all the borders are there. Like we're all, we're all writers, and we all look at everything, and we end each pitch with a discussion of: Are these characters in character? Does this make sense? Is this, you know, is this going to fit with an episode? Two episodes later, that not everyone even knows about. So, like, how long are those meetings? Um, they can they can they can go uh, like a whole half a day. Yeah, um, pizza involved. Depending. Okay, long enough for pizza to be involved. No, there's no food. Oh. We should, no I, food. That's a good idea. You got to be hungry to do your best work. Uh, <laughs> that's right. No, but it's, um, yeah, and it's starving. We'll talk about it. We'll pitch on, and we'll pitch on little jokes. Sometimes it's just like, oh, this would be funny, and that'll be the whole discussion. Or sometimes it'll be like, uh, you know, if you, this character is too sympathetic, you need to think this about them right now. Um, D does it ever screech? Is it ever like a jury where like half of the room is like this character would do this, and the other half is like that, and you're just at a standstill? Does that happen? Yeah, it's heat. It can be very heated. And you got to be the. You got to be the decision maker at that point, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'll, well, I'll be like, that makes sense, uh, but I like it, and then, but that makes sense too. So maybe if it's like, and then we'll, like we'll try and find like a if two things are like complete opposite things, we'll be like, is there a third thing that like works right. that in, but it also you know has <laughs> this in it, and I yeah I agree. You sound that, very diplomatic though about it. I try. Which results in an yeah, awesome like, show. You and you takes guys, it out. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna be this. She's way. so nice. I want to work for her. Uh, I know. <laughs> don't you? Um, but yeah, it's. But it's, I think it's also really, it's really difficult and it's a lot that I ask of my team. Yeah. And, uh, we've been doing it for a while and it, it's... Well, it shows. I've it shows in the quality of the show, too, when you come out the other side and it's something that is unique and it's special and it's personal and it's yours. And that's... And, and that's true of all of you guys. You all have built teams uh, over and over again in some cases that uh, are just making hit after hit. And that's kind of where I want to go next is let's talk about the second time at bat. Okay, you've had a hit. I want to start on this side, Lauren. You did had the hit with uh, My Little Pony. Nobody saw that coming. Did anybody see that coming? No. 
I'm just going to answer for you. I didn't. I saw it. Right? He oh, did. Craig did. Did you? Oh, well, that's cool. That's cool. It is way better than the one I worked on, by the way. It's way better than the one I worked on. Yeah. That's better. Well, it is. That doesn't even need to be said. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> now let's just say, now you go up to bat. The second time, it was the uh, super best friends. Would that yeah, be the yeah, second? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and now, because you've had a hit, I assume, and we'll go down the road, but I know you guys all kind of have this story. Now they want to listen, right? Yes. So tell us about yeah, yeah, the yeah. second time at bat and how that went. Uh, well, the second time at bat for me was it was a small time at bat. Super best friends forever were only five shorts, shorts. and they were like you know two minutes each. Um, but it's it's true. Um, it was funny because uh, Warren. But it Brothers, was like creating a whole show, really. Well, it, I developed it out as a whole show after the shorts went on, and it just it just didn't I so. make That's it. And it was bad. the day up girl thing again. I swear. Was it? Um, unfortunately, yeah. Oh my god. Um, but uh, DC and Warner Brothers were wonderful. It, we just couldn't find a home for it because um, Cartoon Network already had Steven Universe. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They already had girl show. I'm That's their one girl show, right? Well, they had Powerpuff but we're not, up they, too, and that was enough girls not, yeah. for them. No, not, they don't make Rebecca the time, cry. Show, yeah. I'm sorry, Rebecca. No, 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 but that's, I mean, I, anyway. No, no, I no. understand. <laughs> it's, Rebecca's I, I don't blame apologize. you. Wait, really? No. I don't blame you. No, I blame, like, you know, we have two girls That they get girl one shows. girl show. Yeah, that's enough. We, we don't they never say that about Using a phrase like girl show is the problem here, right? What's that? The phrase girl show that's the problem. Well, the idea yeah. that a network would say, we already have a girl show. Yeah. yeah but they don't much. even call it, like, my show internally is, is a boys show. And, yeah. and, yeah. As and that's what lead. all the numbers, like, numbers are, like, how many boys same are Same thing with show? Powerpuff, same thing with Pony. Right. I don't oh. get it. But the whole I thing, don't, I don't know. The wall needs to, I don't know what they're talking about. Totally, like, the, yeah, I, I, I don't should call them a show, right? It's no, it's, show. it's a, yeah. it's a perception but, but I mean, that doesn't seem to be dying. But just to back that up, I mean, yeah. from the from the big suit angle, right? The money people, they're going, well, it's because there's a boy lead and there's a girl lead, and that's how they're differentiating the two, correct? This is a boy show because it's got they, a boy they, lead. They felt like, and, and that was just the people were there at the time. It's, it's I feel like I'm being horrible now. It, it, it was just that, like, we want to uh, hear it. Steven Universe is. Steven is the star and he's a boy, but because the three big girls were right. such prominent characters, that was just enough girls for them at the time. But uh, I right. didn't mean to take it there. I'm really oh, sorry. no, no, no. But I think um, she's on I mean, your it's, side. It's, it's real. This is really going on. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's yeah. true. Like, I'm we, tired of hearing myself say it. Well, I mean, oh, no. I remember um, I, just quickly when we did the Cartoon Institute, Darren Nifsey came in and pitched Star and the Forces of Evil to us. And we in the room were like, this is fantastic. Let's make it. And we were told, like, yeah, we're not doing girl shows. Yeah. Like, but, but why? It's yeah. great. She's it, great. It it's here. It, why? And it was just nope. I'll just say I'm developing a girl show now. Yeah. <laughs> but all the details. You got to tell us everything about it. <laughs> here it comes. Yeah, so you're gonna give us the pitch. What's that? Oh, yeah. I'm not allowed. Oh. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, com Sorry. Co girls comedy adventure for uh, Warner Brothers Animation. So. Um, I'm gonna watch it, and I'm not even a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Rebel, rebel, um, game But yeah, to, to go back to your question, it was, it, they, Warner Brothers actually went to Craig and asked him if he wanted to make some DC Nation shorts. And oh. um, uh, uh, legally, I couldn't. He do wasn't it. available. And mm. I was like, I, I, I want to. Yeah. Can yeah. I? Can I? And, and, it, and it's like you said, I had already had a hit behind me. They pretty much just uh, let me do whatever I want. So those Beautiful. shorts were like. You know, the, the only note I got was that Superman's wedgie couldn't be an atomic wedgie. It, we could only show three <laughs> quarters Wait, of the cheeks. That's we the line? Oh. Show full yeah. cheek. Yeah. Right. That, that was the only note I well, got. Well, that's Superman's butt, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's sacred. I get that. Yeah, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see it. It's a sacred butt. Yeah. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but Craig, uh, to Craig and Butch now, I mean, you guys, first shows take off, big success, right? You're coming around the corner with, hey, I got another idea. Are they coming to you? Well, that's Are what happened. After Powerpuff, they said, we want something else from you. We want, to, want you to do something else. And that's absolutely terrifying, because Powerpuff was huge, not just in popularity, but financially for them. Oh. So they're now looking at me as a very different thing than just a creative guy they have working at their studio. They, have, they see me as a guy who can make them a lot of money. Um, uh -huh. And I'm like, well, I don't even know how Powerpuff made money. I just did what I wanted to do, and people seemed to like it. I didn't manufacture it to be this successful. Well, and they don't know how it made money either, but they knew your name was connected to right. money. Right. <laughs> right. So I just, yeah. I just, no money around you. Yeah. I mean, the thing, the thing that I did was just kind of disappear and just start trying to come up with ideas and come up with an idea that I was obsessed with, something that I just couldn't stop thinking about, coming up with a world 
and a story and a cast of characters that I was like, I can devote six years of my life to this. This is like, because I have you know, lots of ideas, but some, a lot of them are just fleeting and they're not worth that much attention that you're going to delve into making a show. So when I developed Fosters, I was just like, I love this world. I love these characters. I, I can't wait to spend time here. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, I, I was obsessed with it. So I just pitched them the thing I passionate, passionately wanted well, to do. Because you've already made a show. You know how hard it is. You're right. like, it's only worth the pain. It's only worth the right. late nights. It's only worth the fights and the struggles and the effort if I love the crap out of this concept. Yeah. And, it's just not worth it if you're not crazy about and it. And yeah. so that's what it was for that show. And it was just like, it was... And I, you know, the thing with Powerpuff, it was like we had, we always had to have crime fighting. We always had to have good versus evil. There always had to be bad guys. There was all these kind of concepts that were already attached to the basic show that we always had to be beholden to. But when I developed Fosters, all I had to do was have Max show up at the house at three o'clock. And then we could do anything, because that was all it was is like he had to come visit his best friend Blue. Then anything could happen. And so it opened us up for the types of stories we could tell. And I was like, I want to do 22s. I don't want to do 11s anymore. I want to do a bigger story, and I because I've got five main characters. And if I try to cram them into 11, it's just going to get messy. And Lauren and I just kind of wanted to open it up and do a different thing. I do right. like, what's the next? And what you just do? described is what every show since has been basically. Right. Right. I mean, all you guys kind of have shows that are kind of pay homage to that in a way that you've created this open show where almost anything can happen with very right. interesting characters. Right. I kind of did the same thing on uh, Danny Phantom when I, because um, yeah. uh, it's completely the opposite of Fairly Odd Parents. Uh, Fairly Odd Parents was 11 minute episodes. Uh, Danny Phantom, I, I, well, I've always wanted to do an action show like a comic book, because I'm a comic book freak. Me too. And um, they, I knew that Nickelodeon was looking for a boys action show. Sorry, Lauren. Um, <laughs> and, um, but I, I knew that if I could come up with a really cool name or a really cool, obviously the cool idea like we were talking about, something like I'd want to work on for six years. Mm -hmm. And I thought Johnny Quest was a really cool name for a show. I thought Johnny Quest, remember, I remember that as a kid, Johnny Quest. If I could come up with a really cool name for a show, that would be the start. So I thought I'd come up, I came up with really cool names like, you know, Lightning, Thunder, you know, Phantom. And I was like, that's a cool name. I was a like, Billy Phantom. Davy Phantom, <laughs> and by the I finally ended on Danny Phantom. I thought, oh, this is cool. I can make this kid like a Ghostbuster fight ghosts. And then when that magic moment came around, they said, hey, what else do you have? I was at a dinner with Albie Heck, the guy who ran Nickelodeon. He goes, oh, yeah, we're going to pick up more Fairly Odd Parents. Uh, and I like, you have anything else? And I said, yeah, I have this thing called Danny Phantom. He goes, let's make it, just like that. No. Really? That was the pitch? That was the pitch. I mean, you just told him the name. Told him the name. He goes, what? He goes let's make it. What's it about? And I went, oh, <laughs> well. Well, that's a good position to be in. It was very, without, it was very without fortunate. Without doing Fairly Odd Parents, you wouldn't have been in that position. Exactly. So, but I did have a little bit of the concept at that point. They said, so we put it in development at that point. So now you find yourself, and Craig's been there, you're running two shows at a time. Oh. You're like you got Dan, you got your your morning is fairly odd parents and your afternoon is Danny Phantom, but each show has the same amount of issues, has the same amount of storyboards, totally same amount true. of stories, yeah. same amount of people. Then you, get, you find yourself, and then you have to build a whole other team because it's a whole different type of show, and that was a 22 minute show as well. And um, you must have had some crossover with artists or storyboarders. Oh yeah, we absolutely had crossover, yeah, for sure. But then you got yeah. an artist who's doing a fairly odd parents board. They don't, you can't break them off to do a board. Yeah, for Danny Phantom, busy. you just can't do it. So you can, there are some people, production people that cross over, and a few artists here and there when they're done, they can hop over. But some artists couldn't draw the Danny Phantom style like the way they could draw the fairly odd parents style. Yeah. So you're finding, you make a whole bunch of new friends. What mm. that I want to talk a little bit about right now, what's next? You guys have all done fabulous, wonderful things, very personal things. The world is opening up to you. You have new ideas. Um, I'd love to just kind of go down the row a little bit. Let's see I know what you know. Alex my is doing. My next show is called Jimmy Spookums. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's about a kid with a cool name who can do whatever he wants. Um, I'll buy it. I'm buying that. Let's buy it. What's it about? <laughs> yeah. I, who cares? What I, I've about. sold it on the name. Um, uh, I sh I'm probably not the first person to, to ask because I have... So, like, when Gravity Falls ended, um, it, oh. it, it, uh, it, uh. it got real good ratings on the Disney Channel. And people were like, ratings are money. And then so afterwards, everybody, like, I, my phone was ringing off the hook with people just like, we want your next show. We don't care what it is. Make the show for us. Us now. Sign it. Um, <laughs> and, like, uh, show running is real hard. And I hadn't left my office, like, for five years. <laughs> 
Um, so I basically told everyone to put a pin in it and just spent the last year like relaxing. Like I went to Japan and Russia and like wow. like vent, went to conventions and like answered fan letters that had piled up that I never got. To, you do look very happy. Saw my love. <laughs> yeah. I'm a lot more rested. You look very relaxed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like I, mainly I've just been trying to catch my breath because TV is a it's a marathon. It's a gauntlet. Um, and if you try to treat it like a sp- Print, you'll blow out, which is, you know, like, which is what happened to me. I just relaxed. Yeah. So I'm, mm. I'm finally, like, coming back up, like, okay, I've, I've, got, the, I've got the interest again. Um, and uh, I, have, I have a couple of things I'm working on. All of them are, like, totally top secret. I got this one movie thing that I'm doing, and it's not a thing you might have heard no, about. No, that's not top that's secret. That's the house Are you talking about the Pokemon? I'm not, ta- I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something totally different that I'm oh. so excited about. That's well, let's like, just release it now. Dream, dream project, and I'm not allowed to say a single word. Except um, for... I'm I'm really I'm really hoping for an announcement soon. I love TV. I'm I'm right now looking at I have a TV concept that I'm playing with, but I'm also like I enjoy telling a million stories. I also think it might be nice to try telling one story and polish it a little bit. So I'm I'm looking at a movie idea right now, but I yeah. can't say anything else other yeah. than that. Breaking in the feature. And now what you can talk about that has been announced is you're writing the screenplay for the Pokemon movie. I've correct? been all that's been announced is that I was asked to be involved in a Pokemon movie. Um, I oh. can't say anything other than that legally right now. So <laughs> oh. it's nice to be asked. All right. All right, Rebecca. I mean, I'm, I'm still, I'm deep. You're in, in the trenches. In Steven, yeah, yeah. We're, we're working really hard. There's still so much that I want to do with this project. And um, we're doing some things that are so ambitious. I'm just, I'm in it. So. And I love that you write, you write the, the theme song and everything. You wrote all that. You do all the, are you singing too on it? I, I, I didn't sing that one, but um, I sang a song for Adventure Time. Did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I played you guys know that? Marceline's mother. Stuck um, in my head for a month and a half. That <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, I mean, we we recently we did a a musical episode for Steven, and that's something that I have been dreaming about forever, and I want to do more of that also. So um, I definitely want. Uh, well, I, I can't say what you, you guys will see in like <laughs> yeah, yeah. like a year yeah. what we're working on we'll right wait, now. So. We'll be patient. So, right. but but just to back that up, so. You're not even dreaming about the next thing. You're so into what you're doing right I'm now. I'm dreaming about what he said, the time where <laughs> I get to like not relax. work. Take a break. <laughs> yeah. Like um, sleeping for the first time oh for years and years is awesome. I'm just, it's fun. Uh, I'll call you while I'm working. You can just tell me what it's like. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it'll make you more miserable. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be like, I'm still in my pajamas. Let's trade places for one day. <laughs> no one will notice. <laughs> I, this show would be on fire. It would just... Grunkle Stan just walks in. Hi, Gemulets. What are you? <laughs> Cartoon Network blows up. There's some I, possibilities there. You might get a break very soon. All right. Butch, I got to say, um, I, you've uh, been working on new network for a while. Butch is so I have, prolific. I so have, Butch, uh, you, you have like three shows, and then you got a network. Tell us a little bit about it. And that. a new I, series coming out. I have a new series on uh, Nickelodeon called Bunsen is a Beast. It's coming out. Yeah, it comes out 2017, probably like March, April-ish. It's very fun. And then I have this app I started called the Noog Network, N-O-O-G. And Noogs are little creatures. I happen to have some here. Who would like one? What? Who wants a Noog? There's one there. You know you're going to get freebies. One way over Getting there. Getting some Noogies. And there's one I, I, over there. Oh, wait. So I, the, got I, all I got my phone in my pocket. Who wants it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, the, you know what? And, and I think we've, we, uh, all the stories we've told, you've heard us tell. Um, I've got so many ideas. I know these guys do, too. The network won't always buy your idea. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. I've got a lot of other ideas that haven't sold the networks. I wanted to do them all myself. So I started my own network um, on an app on the iPhone store called the Noog Network. And the Noogs are little avatars you can walk around with. They take you around. They're like little Smurfs. There's hundreds of them. Uh, that was one I just threw out in the audience there. And um, you can download it for free on the, iPhone, on the uh, app store. And it's really cool. I get to, every time I pitch something to a network and they say no, I make it for my own network. And it's really cool. And I take outside ideas too on occasion. And uh, you guys, if you want to see 
submit ideas. You have to look up how to do that. And um, but it's pretty fun, and it'll go for a long time. It's doing really well right now too. So I'm excited. If, about if we want to find it, you got to tell us how you actually fund that kind of a thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I can't that's, that that's, that's a that's a whole separate panel. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole separate. I want to be in on that panel. So I want to know it? how many noogs are there, and if you can catch them all. That's you can't. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah He's writing a script. You might want to work that into. It's never uh, ending at the moment. Is it noognetwork.com? N-O- N-O-O-G is noognetwork.com, yeah. And okay. uh, you can find it through the website. or Check that uh, out, guys. That yep. sounds good. Greg and Lauren, besides making babies, okay, so that's, you're very productive there. I get <laughs> that. I get that. Craig, what are you up to these days? Uh, well, basically, you know, to go back to what Alex said about, you know, us clearing a path for him and to, to make shows, uh, Rebecca and Alex has actually cleared a path for guys like me, you know. For years and years, it was 11-minute wow. random cartoons that you can play in any order. Right. But Rebecca and Alex have proven audiences want you know, serialized, long forms, complex stories. There's an audience for that, that, that uh, fans like that, that that's a viable way to tell stories. So I've kind of uh, decided I, I don't want to do this random 11th anymore. And I, I found an idea I had from a few years ago that I always put on a shelf because I'm like, well, no network's going to develop this because it's serialized. And so I'm developing a serialized show for Disney right now. Nice. That's one long form story and has a beginning, middle, and end because nice. you guys have proven you can do that. So this is what's great about you know, new talent coming in because they're always opening up new doors and providing new opportunities for cartoons and storytelling. So it all just well, you guys are all evolving. game changers. I love that. Absolutely. Lauren. Game changers changing it for the game changers. <laughs> yeah. They re game change on top of the game change. <laughs> boom, boom. Double game change. Lauren, so you, you can't talk about what it is. It, action, yeah, comedy, yeah. can you say that at least? It's, oh, it's an action comedy for me. Both. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, there will always be comedy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Lauren will always have girls. Yes. Uh, yes. I insist. Uh, yes, so uh, uh, I'm developing very early stages of development at Warner's TV Animation, the wonderful people I worked with on Super Best Friends Forever, um, right. and developing a new girls about girls, not necessarily girls. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, action, action comedy, uh, superhero adventure comedy for uh, with starring girls. Yes. Any Sold. sense of when that would be come out? Any hints? Uh, uh, we are so in the early stages of okay. development, so um, it's not it's not greenlit yet, but uh, very very optimistic. Actually. Come up with a cool title, and I think that's. That's going to go. Yeah. Jimmy Spookums? That part might be Jimmy Spookums. Jimmy Spookums. Jimmy Spookums. <laughs> Somebody yeah. in the audience is actually going to develop, develop Jimmy Spookums. <laughs> I know it. I know but it, it has to be Jane Spookums now, because it's a Jane girl Spookums. thing. Exactly. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, uh, she can call herself Jimmy. You can't tell Jimmy Spookums what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to I want to thank you guys all for being here. You guys, are, it, these guys are busy, and they were just joined us for an hour. Let's hear it for them. You doing all right? Yeah. I can't tell you how great this has been that, that you've been able to join Tom and I. This has been uh, an education for us too. And now Tom. Your uh, Doug could... the Pug is going to take off as a concept. Oh, this is going to be awesome. What are you doing? Oh, did I throw that out? Yeah. Okay, Come on now. It's got a cool name, though. I'm developing a comedy adventure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's got a cool name. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks to Tom and Tony, by yes. the way, guys. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, th- this like never happens. Like this is a crossover episode right now. Our studios right. never put us in the same room, so they made this magic happen. Just getting, just getting uh, through to Alex through via tweet. I think is the only in Twitter. There's the only way that I could reach out to you. But that was a big highlight in my career. Because he lives so. there. The guy lives yeah. there. That's... I know. Yeah, he he was an egg avatar named Dipsifica25, and he <laughs> said, "You come to CTN." I was like, "I guess I have to." <laughs> That's right. You come. He right. called you an egg avatar. Uh, <laughs> Nice. I get that. All right. So thank you guys very much. And um, we'll see whoever can join us. Have a great day. It's Thank see you. See you. Yeah.